Diverse groups of indigenous people occupied Peru during the pre-Hispanic period when the first migrants arrived in the Indian valley and area probably more than 13,000 years ago. They were hunter-gatherers. Who were these people? What is amazing about Peru? Does it have any connection to Africa or ancient Africa? Did the Peruvian look like him or all that? Or the Moshe? Or this mummy? This is a white end. A version of the last Inca Emperor Atahualpa, which can be found at the Brooklyn Museum in New York. Does it represent the indigenous people or those who founded the Inca civilization? There are some interesting places and features in Peru. The Inca city of Machu Picchu, the sparkling blue waters of Lake Titicaca, which is surrounded by rolling hills and traditional uh, small uh, villages. The Nazca lines that can only be seen from the air, where you can see over 70 uh, plants and animals drawn, and the lines extending to 100, 130 meters wingspans of several animals like lizards, monkeys, a hummingbird, killer whale, and the spider. There is a lot of mystery about it, but the mystery can be solved easily by understanding that the People that founded these lines and drew these lines knew a lot about uh, totems. What is it about Peru to learn? It's a mysterious possible connection to ancient Africa, specifically Hamid, or European history that whitens and uh, rejects everything that connects it to indigenous melanin dominant humans. Peru is found in Southern America and uh, it shares lands with uh, a number of countries, Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia, and Chile. And uh, with its longest border, it's shared with uh, Brazil. Who drew these lines and who founded uh, this area that we know today as Peru? It is the Portuguese as well as the Spanish because the Portuguese and Spanish, they are one people anyway, Europeans. So they are the ones that drew these borders. All these borders should not limit our understanding and perception of Peru or, or of continents. Let's look at this uh, via the introduction. And uh, let us review the modern lies, the history of pre-Hispanic uh, Peru. who we'll have a look into uh, the Inca civilization, who founded it and who represents that uh, today. And then we have a, we'll have a, a summary uh, on the agenda that we have today about the issue and the, what we can learn from Peru. Now, what we know about the history of Peru is that it is distorted by European Spanish invasion. We must refer more to its pre-Hispanic civilization and identify modern lies. Modern lies on the indigenous issues and people of Peru. This pie chart shows that very much. You, you see, the largest population here are called mestizos over 60 percent you would think that these are the indigenous people but when you go to the definition of terms you will be shocked and then you can find here that the african descent is given 2.4 percent while these others are above uh, 2.4 percent it's not by coincidence it's very very practical and it depicts what has happened but does not depict the origins of the indigenous people in Peru. What race can we give the native uh, Peruvians? Do they look like this? We have already seen that almost half of them are mestizos. Uh, do they look like this? Let's look at a number of terms here. All of these people that are shown here are not indigenous in Peru or Southern America. They are not the native, the autochthonous, or indigenous people, or first people. We know that melanin dominant human beings have been on the earth for 3 billion years, pale Asians for 15,000 years, Europeans for 8,500 years. Who are these human beings? They don't look like this, because we have already given the dates when these people arrived on the earth. Let us define terms to remove modern lies. When we say Mesoamerica, we mean Mexico and Central America. When we say pre-Columbian, we mean before Christopher Columbus. When we say Ameri Indian, we mean the indigenous Indians of North and South America. We will be 
going to define this further. When we say Paleo Indian or Paleo American, we are referring to the original black settlers of the Americas. Paleo Indian or Paleo American. The rest, they are not indigenous or native. Let's proceed with more definitions. When we speak of a mestizos, it, it is a person of Mongol or Amer Indian and white admixture. Now go back to find who is an Amer Indian, is an indigenous Indian who arrived there around 15,000 years coming to was to today. Whereas the Paleo Indian arrived there 130 thousand years ago there is evidence and proof archaeological evidence and proof about that then we've got example is a person of black and Amerindian indian admixtures so this is how we can be able to understand the native peruvians and the new peruvians that came later so example is a person of black and Amerindian indian admixture we're showing him here and uh, these are his example, she's example, and this example of black and Amer Indian mixture. And this is a mulatto here. This one, mulatto, mukarad. That's what we say in our language. Mukarad from colored, being colored. From our African and Bantu perspective, means is not melanin dominant. Then we've got this uh, George Lopez, a Mexican Amer a Mexican American. He shows no sign of Mongo admixture. He is then presumably a mulatto rather than a mestizo. And then we've got mestizo children of the village of Pumangara in Peru. So these are not indigenous. These are not native. These are not original. These were not the first people to be in Peru. The first people who were in Peru is this a black woman here, shown here. Now, we, when we want to look at the history of the Peruvians by going back to pre-Hispanic Peru and ask the question who populated Mesoamerica that is Mexico and Central America or pre-Columbian or before Columbus in other words the Andean civilization the Mesoamerican civilization Olmec, Aztec and Maya as well as the Inca here these were melanin dominant human beings who looked like this these are the indigenous uh, people that were already there. There is a genetic evidence and proof about that. The proof, you can read it uh, from this article in Nature, which uses genetics, and say genetic studies have consistently indicated a single common origin of Native American groups from Central and South America. They came from uh, indigenous Australians, New Guineans, and Andaman Islanders who moved there and uh, they are uh, the people that existed there before the Eurasians or the so-called Native American Indians. We are also aware that uh, there were black rulers who ruled in Peru. Here there are images. These do not look like Mongols or white. But the fake ones that are promoted today in films and books look like this. From these images, we know that the indigenous rulers of pre-Hispanic Peru and Inca period were melanin dominant human beings, not Europeans. So these are part of, of uh, mixed people. They are mulattoes. They are not part of the ancient American populations, just like Europeans, Spanish, and Portuguese. This also we are sh showing here. These Americans was first settled by black-skinned and Negroid uh, phenotype people, and then several thousand years later by black-skinned Mongol phenotypes. Let's be clear about that. The people that moved into America via the Bering Straits or from South America via Australia and Papua New Guinea were black skinned no grade Mongols, original black Chinese or original black Asians. Remember the Pai Catchers principle and the wars there and the general movement of our people. These are the lovely black Peruvian women in Kinka, Peru picking cotton. 
you can see clearly that these are melanin dominant human uh, beings there is also a tribe of the euros people the euros are pre incan people who live on uh, 42 self fashioned floating islands in lake titicaca uh, in the puno peru and bolivia they believed that they were the owners of the lakes and they have totems and they've got black blood they claimed that and they teach that they look melanin dominant without any problems these are the uros in peru you have heard a lot of think, uh, civilization where did the first native uh, groups migrate from the native the ancestors of uh, living native americans arrived in what is now the united states at least 15000 years ago possibly much earlier from asia via the bering straits that's very very correct and can be proved by science however other findings and the remains in mesoamerica and south america of the oldest uh, people found that they were australoid the racial type the next oldest are of south asian polynesian racial type we have spoken of who were melanin dominant so these moved across and they started to populate and migrate this indicates that the migration pattern of the first settlers of the americas was not from north america going south but rather from south to north america straight like this so you can see from africa they went into asia china then bearing Straits. Then it stayed there and the letter already moved here and this is where you get the mixing and the mixture of uh, these uh, racial types. Also many migrations. You can see here genetic proof 23,000 years ago. They moved from Europe here. These were remember the Khoisan. Remember the color of the Khoisan and the rest of the Khoisan. And they started to populate and live here. And the Khoisan had moved to China. And remember, they also moved via the Bering Straits. And our other ancestors moved from the south. So there was a lot of mixing. Let's continue to look at this now. You can see that uh, from this website, this is a world map showing and highlighting the evidence that ancient African pyramids dates and uh, their location, as well as the ancient Peruvian pyramids and their dates and their location, that they are of the same generation. So the people that built here, the Sphinx that you see, melanin dominant human beings, is the same as people that built uh, these here, the Great Pyramid of Karao and the Great Pyramid of Geza. Mummification. This is what we can learn from Peru. You can see the architecture, which dates back to third millennia, which dates back to third millennia in Hamid, Africa. Neurosurgeon or neurosurgery activities and practice, therapeutic procedures, same. Although in Peru there is no known uh, document, but there is proof that they practice trepanation which was also practiced in ancient Hamid and there is uh, the writing of the papyrus writings and then a religion in Peru they stress the importance of the afterlife and worship the sun god Inti you see Untu Muntu That's, you see this is us it's not different although this in two is now referring to the physical sun while it's our ancestors in Hamid in Africa still retained the car as the aspect and you can see a mummy that was found in Peru that looks like this with African hair, African features, everything there without any uh, doubt. What is it about uh, Peru uh, to learn? We learn about the Inca civilization that it was melanin dominated, not melanin recessive, melanin dominant, this gold that they used. From as far back as ancient times, there was also a fashion among the African or melanin dominant women to shave off their hair. There it is clear no problems seen so what we can look at at the moment now is the understanding of the inca civilization that the inca themselves call themselves tiwa tisu hu ruled an empire extending from ecuador to central chile their capital was called Cacuzo or cosco the inca were a peruvian highland people the king of the inca was called sapa Sapa Inca or simply Inca looked like this and Machu Picchu elevation a good place to visit and its UV radiation proves that no other person could have worked and built it other than a melanin dominant human being anyone else would not have sweated and built a structure like this up high there it's a lot of uh, information there what is it about Peru that we can learn we learn that melanin dominant human beings lose memory easily lose history easily you remember this is a black peruvian woman 1868 this is a 
Eugenio Manoy was active in Lima, Peru from 1861 to 1865. In 1862, he opened a lecture studio in Del Palacio. And there, how they abused us, how they killed us, how they destroyed us, putting us in chains. This is black Peruvians in uh, uh, Peru. Same history. This is what we learn. What we learn about Peru. We learn that once our leaders go off a wreck, they drag all of us. Wreck. These are a portrait of a black Inca nobleman and his sons, painted by native Indian painter Andres Sanchez Galque, 1599. The Inca are depicted wearing Spanish clothing, but with Inca gold adornments and the captioned with Spanish names, prefixed by Don, meaning Lord or Gentleman. This is the oldest painting known from Southern America and was commissioned as a gift to the King of Spain and it is clear that they were melanin dominant rulers and noblemen. Again in summary therefore what is it about Peru that we need to learn? There is the current Peruvian president Pedro Castillo. He is a foreigner. He's not a melanin dominant human being. These are the Moche who from about 250 BCE to 750 AD. The that we find our problems in East Asia. It is clear, therefore, that the pre-Inca and pre-Hispanic uh, could not possibly have been of Mongol people. They were full-blooded and mixed Inca melanin dominant people who could not pass by any stretch of imagination for Spaniards or European. There they are, a clay, a Moshe bust, the Moshe who ruled in Peru from about 250 to 750 AD, the Incas and the Peruvians and their neighbors here, Colombian, 200 BCE to 250 AD. Colombian again, Sinu culture. Same, this is the same as that. No problems. How did we get where we are today? Because we have forgotten these interesting facts about Peru and the history that it teaches us. The great lesson is that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. This was said by a philosopher, George Sandayana, but those who cannot know themselves are going to get lost. Remember what we learn from Peru. Pera means finished. Either a good job or a bad job. Lima, which is Rima, means ignorance or start to be productive or a farm. So this is very clear. What we need is unity, which gives us power. If you are interested in this type of unity, it is time for you to say, may the gods appear. Our revered ancestors, our revered ancestor spirits are blessed. May you be raised beyond the highest stars in this life as we pay homage and honor to all our holy ancestors and uh, blameless divinities for this life. Amen. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Ibru Ethics. This is Rabbi L.M. Tumizulu, Hamanaja Topi, Kunikenim Jakanja, Tumizulu Muskaban. Saying, Katenda. See you Until we meet again, let's remember unity and let's remember the lessons from Peru.